All right, two pieces of news, and these are from the dirt sheets. I don't, I don't go to the greatest sources. But one report front page, UFC moving on from Angano versus Jones. On the other side, I go to front page, Francis Angano turns down rematch with Derek Lewis. Okay. So let's just take from the perspective that both of these are right. Okay. Admitting that my sources aren't, aren't great, but generally in the sport where there's smoke, there's fire to some degree. So, so let's operate off of this perception. Where should we begin? Because Francis versus John is very complex. I know when you look at it, you go, Chael, there's nothing sophisticated about this. That's the fight. Make the fight. We were told John Jones fights the winner of Francis versus Stipe. We've got our winner. You make the fight. I hear what you're saying, but at the time that that premise started, that John will feed into the winner was operating with the information that you had at that time, which is John wanted to take on the winner. When it gets revealed that John wants a, a big carrot dangle in front of him and can be talked into taking on the way, it changed. It, everything changed. You go, ah, because that gets complex, right? If you were to bring John in, by example, but if you were to bring John in against Francis, you got a huge fight. No way around that. But if you give John a new contract and you realize absent of the match with Francis, there is no big business. There is no mega fight or two or three or four for John. You are now stuck with what you did to get the Francis fight and say John won. I mean, do you see the problem? John versus Derek Lewis, good fight. John versus Stipe, good fight. John Curtis Blades, good fight. None of those are mega fights. Enough that you want to lock yourself into a contract that you have to honor for matches potentially happen down the road. It's just very problematic or at least potentially so. Then you look at Francis, and Francis is in such a sweet spot. Francis needs nobody right now. Any way you want to do Francis, it works. I mean, you just start pulling it. You want to see a new young guy get his shot? Great. You want to see John? Great. You want to see Derek rematch? Makes the most sense. You want to see Stipe as soon as he finally speaks up and says, he right, there's no way to go wrong with Francis. Stephen A. Smith went as far as to say that Francis and Gano Becoming the heavyweight champion is the single greatest thing to ever happen to the UFC. Stephen A is not totally wrong. I mean, there is a lot of things there that make him very correct. So if you're trying to bring John, and that's just for one night, no matter what happens, you have one good night. John wins, John loses. Doesn't matter. You have one good night. You've got to really look at that. Okay, great. UFC moved on. They're not going to play those games. This is about who wants it. It's competition. Who wants it? You want to talk about what sells? What sells is people understanding this is your dream and it's what you want. Okay. So you got to put those two things together. Now, if the other dirt sheet is correct and they defaulted down to Derek Lewis and Derek Lewis said, or uh, Derek says, I'm in and Francis says, I'm not interested in Derek. You're sitting here going, wait, what just happened? I had no idea ever we'd be in this spot with Francis, with our new champion. And if you ever do that, by the way, and Francis may have well done it, and I just don't have this information. But if you ever say no to the UFC, I would encourage you to then make a suggestion. And make sure you understand this, fellow fighters. Before your phone ever rings and you're hearing, hey, do you want to compete with so-and-so? Before that ever happens, I think in some fighters' minds, and possibly in the fans' minds, so let's just clear this up. That's just a thought, and we're workshopping, and we're beginning ideas. No. Before your phone ever rings, before they ever settle in, all right, this is what we're going to do for a main event for the championship, branding and marketing and everything. Before we get behind this, there are meetings, and there are teams, there are presentations made. There could be a scenario where Dana would turn to a marketing team about a specific date and a specific venue and say, what would the plan be if... And if the marketing team doesn't provide an interesting or compelling enough plan, they will have to move on. And I only bring that to you because there's a lot of things that already happened before you got that call. So when you say no, there is large amounts of work and effort and planning that just got set on fire. So your no could really bother somebody because you're showing a lack of respect to the preparation that went into that call that now has to be started over, of which you could cure if you offered a suggestion. 
I wasn't thinking Derek. You know what? I, I'm really taking a look at, boom, throw the name in. That's going to help you every time. In Francis's situation, it could solve the problem. It could be more than helpful. It could be problem solving because Francis is in such a unique spot. Francis cannot go wrong right now. On a bad, on a bad idea. Bad idea, the, the floor right now for Francis is good. You could then have great, you could have unbelievable, you could, you could only go up from there. Francis versus anyone right now just works. There's no other athlete you could say that about in all of sports. It's not even true for Tyson Fury. Tyson has to have the right opponent. It's not true about Anthony Joshua. It's not true about Ruiz. I mean, just by example, it's going to take a lot of ingredients in those formulas, except for Francis. Francis could take on a broken vacuum right now, and people will stop what they're doing. I'll give you another thought on Francis, by the way. I had a piece of advice for Francis two weeks ago, which is remain mysterious. One of the great things that Francis had on his side is we don't know him. He's mysterious. He wasn't doing a lot of interviews. We don't know if he's a funny sense of humor guy or if he's a cold, boring guy, if he's exciting nightlife guy. If he's We don't know, and I thought that that was better. I even used the comparison of Brock Lesnar. The reason Brock doesn't do interviews, the reason he has Paul Heyman speaking for him, is Vince McMahon believes monsters don't talk. And Brock was able to remain so mysterious. And, and, and fortunately, usually speculation can really hurt a person. But in Brock's case, people speculated to these things of grandeur that you couldn't even create. You couldn't organically create. So psh, stop right there. And I thought Francis had the same thing until... I've seen some of Francis's interviews lately. In fact, I saw a 40-minute piece Francis did with Ariel. I take it all back. Stay out there. Turns out Francis is a really interesting guy. Turns out he's a very calm guy. Turns out he's a, a fairly curious guy. Not to the extent of, say, Henry Cejudo, but Francis is a fairly curious guy. He's got a great personality. That's what I'm getting at. And that's the risk. The risk is he comes off wrong when the allure is already so right. No, Francis is coming off very well. More interviews. He's very good at them. He has a level of charisma. And when the biggest, baddest dude in the room acts like he's the biggest, baddest dude in the room, it, he's a dick. Francis doesn't do that. It's one of the things that Cormier had on his side so favorably. Cormier still has it from an announcing position. Daniel Cormier, who is the biggest, baddest dude in the room, comes across so genuinely playful. You see the fan. You're reminded of that little kid where Daniel started before he became the champ champ. And it comes across, and it's endearing. And I'm starting to see some of those things from Francis, right? I mean, believe it or not, when you have this big, huge, scary monster who, by the way, is now universally recognized as the baddest man on the planet, but you have a fun and lighthearted side that's very hard to turn away from. And I think that that's what we're starting to see with Francis. I started to gather those things just from the 40 minutes I saw with him and Ariel. But I will go on record saying, I take it back. My advice was, I, I take it back. I take it back. Francis, more. More Francis, better Francis. Star Francis is going to be a bigger star Francis.